Welcome, this is Dr. Amanda Rockinson zapq In these set of sessions, we're going to talk about the research process. In this session, we're going to specifically focus on topic selection for a research project, thesis, or dissertation. By the end of our time together, our goal is for you to be able to describe the steps to successfully selecting a topic for your research project. So, let's go ahead and get started. Let's begin by talking about the research process. The research process usually begins with an I wonder, I wonder if. That is, the research idea or topic that you want to investigate or that you even want to investigate now was probably derived from your experience, an interest that you had, or from some knowledge that you gained during studying. I used to work as a child and family therapist. When I was counseling clients, specifically families, I used to notice that as the child's behavior problems increased in school, the quality of the family communication usually decreased. So I wondered, was there a relationship or is there a relationship between the quality of the family's verbal communication and the number of behavior incidents that a child had in the school? Now, this inquiry is completely practical in nature. If I was to research it as a practitioner, as a counselor, it would be worthwhile for me in my practice. However, it's not a topic that would be sufficient for the purpose of empirical research because the purpose of empirical research is theory. Now when I'm talking about empirical research, I'm talking about research that I plan to publish or research that I'm doing for a thesis or a dissertation. Again, solving an applied problem is not sufficient or appropriate for these purposes. Empirical research really needs to contribute um, or build theory. It needs to significantly contribute to the scholarly literature in the field. Um, Again, an I wonder is a great place to start, but when you're proposing that empirical research and developing an empirical research plan, it's important to remember it's a place to start. You need to move from I wonder, or the I wonder stage, to the literature immersion stage. That is, take your topic and learn about it in the literature. What, lit what has been published, what has been um, researched on, on the topic? In doing this, in doing that literature review or that lit in the literature immersion stage, what you really need to do is place your idea within the scholarly literature. The goal is to show how your research or the research idea that you have really fits into what we already know. Perhaps my idea um, of looking at the relationship between um, family, the family's um, verbal communication and the number of behavior incidents that a child has in school has already, already been researched. And if it has, then it's not a good topic to investigate for empirical research. But it, again, in that immersion stage, I am looking to demonstrate the relationship between what I plan to research and what already exists in terms of theory and research. And I really want to show how my research will make a contribution to the field. I want to show how it's going to fill a gap in the literature. Once I demonstrate that, I then can go ahead and enter the problem identification stage in which I identify my research questions and my hypotheses. Once those are identified, I can really start pl planning my research and actually going go ahead and conduct my research. As you heard as I described the process, one of the pitfalls that most beginning researchers fall into is really to underestimate what's currently known about a topic, specifically their topic in the literature. So again, it's really important that you take your topic and then you dive, swim in that literature to determine what's already known. Let's go back and consider my practical inquiry, the one about the quality of the family relationship and a child's behavior problems in school. Let's say that after reviewing the literature, I find that several studies have indeed been done on this topic, and that there truly is a relationship between these two factors. However, as I look at the literature, I noticed that there, these factors have been studied and examined within middle school and high school students. Elementary students have never, ever been examined. Aha! I have a gap in the literature. I may also note that several studies suggest that further investigation is needed to determine if a child's attitude toward authority is a mediating factor between um, the relationship between these two variables. 
Thus, I come up with the following empirical problem that leads to this question. Is there a relationship between the quality of the family's verbal communication and the number of behavior incidents that a child has in elementary school while controlling for the child's attitude toward authority? Now, this is truly a topic worth pursuing. Why? Because first, I've contextualized it within the relevant literature. I've looked at the previous findings and considered what has been done and what hasn't been done, and I grounded my topic there. Then, I also made sure that what I'm studying extends the knowledge in the field. Now, those are the two most important factors or keys to selecting an appropriate topic for research. However, there are some other considerations that you need to make when you are selecting an appropriate topic, especially when you're considering it for a dissertation or a thesis. Another consideration is you need to make sure that you select a topic that sustains your interest, that's person, personally meaningful to you. However, you need to make sure that it's not too emotionally charged because if you have a truly emotionally charged topic, let's say for example you are very very interested in children with autism and you have a nephew that um, has autism. That is a topic probably near and dear to your heart. And if you write about that topic, you may not be willing and able to accept criticism about that topic. And so it's really important, especially for the dissertation process, that you not have a topic that you're too emotionally charged about um, because you do need to be able to accept criticism and constructive feedback about your writing and about um, about your manuscript. So make sure it's something that sustains your interest but it's not too emotionally charged. The second thing you need to consider is to make sure you keep it simple. When my husband and I go to the Grand Canyon, um, he takes a video camera and I take a, a regular camera. I really enjoy 